Welcome, welcome everyone. And it's so amazing and wonderful to have you all here with us and to have you coming to us uh, through this amazing connection that we have through the internet. Just to be, to have these, these times to celebrate Dr. Gustavo Girard. And, and, and I cannot put into words the immense pleasure, the immense pleasure that it's for me to have you here and to have the whole Society for Adolescent Health and Medicine here celebrating you and your outstanding trajectory. And I have at the end a story, a personal story to tell, but we're saving that to the end, right? Yes. So, well, so thank you, thank you. So we can cry together, right? Yes, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> so I'm going to read a little about all the things that you have done. So your mini introduction, right? So Gustavo, it's a pediatrician from Argentina specializing in adolescent medicine. His main areas of interest and expertise include growth and development, chronic illness, reproductive health, gender, ethics, suicide, public health and spirituality. He has authored more than 100 papers and 20 books, two of them as the main author. Dr. Girard is the founder and former director of the Argentine Adolescent National Program at the Ministry of Public Health. He has participated in multiple congresses, congresses and it's a founder and member of the Board of Directors for multiple national and international societies and institutions. Dr. Girard has been a member of the Society of Adolescent Health and Medicine since 1989 and it's currently an emeritus member. Since joining the Society for Adolescent Health and Medicine, he has served as the co-chair of the International Regional Chapter and has on several occasions been a consultant at the Pan American Health Organization. In 2001, he served as the Vice President Regional Chapter Award and the Founders Award of the International Association of Adolescent Health and Medicine and has been recognized by all his colleagues around the world. So, so welcome, thank you. Welcome. So, you know that. <laughs> I said that all, always those presentations are only for for the ego, <laughs> but one at this age. No. Well, the most important thing is that during my life, have I done what I want, yes. and it was for me. In, uh, introducing in, I, I was a pediatrician, more than 10 years of working like that. Neonatology was the beginning of the pediatrics in the delivery office and with all those things. And um, 10 years after I was received, I, I had a conference in uh, Buenos Aires by a Mexican doctor, Professor Dr. Enrique Dulanto Gutierrez. Enrique Dulanto Gutierrez at that moment was organizing a service of adolescent medicine. It was already organized in Distrito Federal of Mexico. And you know, it was a conference about Adolescence and Adolescent Health. And when I heard him, it was like a flash. <laughs> I don't know if in, in the United States, the, when you get in love, they said, me flasheo. <laughs> we said in Argentina, no? It was like a flash. Then I said, well, this is what I want, no? During my career of medical doctor, I also have been until the fourth, uh, third, fourth year in psychology. That was amazing. So I want both of right? those things. But the, the pediatric area won my, my heart and said, no, I will continue as pediatrician until that moment. And in that moment, I found that both things, the, the integration of a body, mind, spirit was all the same thing. And looking for that integration, perhaps adolescence could be 
like a representative of, of that moment in, in our life, no? And working with them, for them, and then I suppose that was must be my, my ideal. And at that moment I, I began. One year later I was in Mexico, uh, still for a month, and I returned to Buenos Aires, and when I returned to Buenos Aires, I said, well, I began. Who can teach me? 1977, wow. no one can teach me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I went to some words when we were, they were talking about adolescents. At that moment, the pediatrician books have only very, very little things about eating disorders, wow. anorexia, and not, not a single word, no? And since was, and so that was, we have begun in, adolescents have begun in 19, perhaps the beginning of the 20th century, no? But by a sociologist and all that idea, no? But in health, no. It was you know, like in that I always said that um, medicine never takes care of the population that is not sufficiently value, valorized, yeah. seria value, valuable, valuable, no? And so when the back. adolescent was, uh, I mean, um, uh, a change between infants and adulthood, Nothing take care. And there was this bias, right? Like, they, they don't need us. They don't have any disease. They're healthy, right? They're and, so healthy, yes. And I think it's a, represent, it's a representation of the bias, don't you think? Like, mm -hmm. we as a society have some time for the nation, right? Yes. That, and that it was a very... So when I said I want to work with adolescents, but why? <laughs> if it's not necessary, mm -hmm. they are quite healthy. Mm -hmm. So I began between the age of... 11, 12, in the pediatrician, when they were not going more, let them, I want to, to be with them. And well, that was the beginning. In a very, in the I, area. I love, I love that story. Can you share the story? Yes. How, how, how do you start a new innovative program in Argentina or in a Latin American country? In, in Argentina, it began, it had been, other people from Argentina that were beginning to work, but almost in the way, same way, no? I said, I want a place. And they gave me, but the, the, the consultant room of the, uh, and the attention room of, for pediatrician, there were boxes open, so can, how can I exam an, an adolescent in that place? And the adolescents, you know, they make noise, they disturb. <laughs> and it yeah. was there an, an old bathroom, a bathroom that uh, unused. And I said, if this bathroom is unused, let me make here two rooms, two little rooms, one for examination and the other with two, not so little like that, but two little tables. And then it was created the unit of adolescents. They said, why you call it unit? Because I am the one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I began and it was um, during 10 years, uh, almost a self-taught education. And that was the, the beginning. And in all Latin America have begun with um, uh, Anita Secoli in Brazil, Veronica Gaete in Chile, Chile um, Dr. Freire in Peru, that here is one of her colleagues, <laughs> disciples, and, and in so, bueno, Mexico, and that was the beginning. But it was amazing also, like, even from the beginning, right, there was some interaction uh, or community all among all of you, right? Because 
it didn't take it didn't took you too long, right? To to start moving things forward it and to think some, about. I, I suppose that almost take ten years. That um, and, and they, they, they happen things so so strange, no? I received a letter from Brazil. Dr. Girard, I want to be with you. I don't know how they found me. We don't have at that moment internet, nothing about it. Um, to your unit. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, to be sincere, my unit is a very, no, no, but I, and she stayed, a medical doctor from Brazil, one month in Buenos Aires, receiving teaching of a professor that has only one year and a half begin with this. I made a pass for endocrinology, growth and development, trying to, to find how to deal with that. But with all those people of Latin America, almost all were pediatricians. You know that uh, ALAPE is the Latin American Pediatric Association. And in each country, they have the Pediat National Pediatric Society. And they, uh, they work with committees. And one was uh, uh, preparing, no one was preparing the committee of adolescents. So I said, well, I began to work there and said, well, we need to have our group from the National Pediatric from Argentina making a group from ALAPE. And that began the Committee of Adolescents of ALAPE that nowadays have near 25 countries being integrated to that committee, no? always in the pediatric uh, pathway. Yep. And it's amazing, like, to me, right, like, talking to you and, and listening to, to your story, right, like, when you, while you were learning and, and trying to pick up pieces, right, to, to grow, um, that at the same time you guys were moving all these things together, and then you, you were moving things in Argentina. You, you were a Fauci somehow, right? You survived how many... That's such a skill, right, to, to be there and working with the national government and different national governments, right? With it, was, you know, it also was a necessity. Totally. It was a but requirement it's a skill. Yeah, because but it's a skill. we need to exchange experiences, no? Brazil at that moment was growing faster than us. Uh, and, and working and meetings together. But for example, it was so difficult at that moment. Without internet, the only things were letters. I know. So we sent letters and without any, any kind of money of anyone. Yeah. <laughs> no? Any support, economic support. So even when I went to Paraguay, it was very much cheaper from Paraguay to send letters than from Argentina. <laughs> and I was at the beginning, I, I don't have too, uh, too, uh, too much money. So we sent letters to each society to make a delegate to the ALAPE committee, and there began 10 years later of that, that was 1980s in the beginning. Amazing. And 10 years later, 15 years later, we said, well, adolescent is not only for pediatricians. Adolescent is an interdisciplinary. An interdisciplinary. And you know, talking about interdisciplinary. Oh, you have an amazing. You so know that I, I found here that you talk always of multidisciplinary work and it's in, for we, we made a, a great difference between multidiscipline interdiscipline and transdiscipline multiple discipline is very disciplines working with a patient and the patient would go to each service to require some treatment Interdiscipline 
if they work in only one place and all together and exchange experiences. And when we began with the, our, our group, more important, the most important person in the group of health attention was the social worker. When the adolescents arrived to the program, the first one that was with him or her it's was true. the social worker and said, you need the gynecologist, you need a clinician, you need a psychologist, and, and that was, and when we exchange our experiences, that is multidiscipline. And when the, all the disciplines work together and can have a more important and transcendental weight outside or creation, that is transdiscipline. That is so amazing, right? And for all the fellows that are there, I think, I think you know, right? The way that we train or we try to train um, our, our, our workforce, it's bringing those concepts. But I'm not quite sure we, we aim for that, right? That transdisciplinarity. But it's something that I feel like it's, it's so unique, right? It's those things, we, we keep talking about this, right? They need to bring, because it, in a way it's a very, it's a, it's a very Latin American thing, right? Having all these discussions and conversations and brainstorming, because from that, it's when you're going to have the epiphany, right? Yes. It happens in those moments, and it happens when you are like someone that is not like you, that is seeing your piece, or what you're trying to solve, right? From the other side that you can see. So that concept, it's, it's fascinating to me, and I'm so, so happy that you so clearly define that and, and put yes. that into work for our, for our fellow, and for us, for us that we need to guide them. Yes, I think that is the way, and even now, for the, and even now when you, you found uh, how society is uh, difficult to, the integration from society from the adolescence mm -hmm. group, no? The, and that is not new, you know. I was going there, to say, that's for There are right? words from, phrases from the fourth year before Christ it's that said the adolescents uh, don't respect the elders, the adolescents don't work well, the adolescents. And, and that was, uh, um, um, they, don't, they don't take care, the society, about adolescents. But now, the adolescent group is growing very, very quickly. Rapidly. Quickly and, and stronger, thank God. And, and, I, and I feel in part, I don't know what you feel, right? But there's this, I really feel like some part of our society has recognized, right? That they are sort of like this, they measure what's going on in a way and with a, with a na naivete, right? And, and a transparency. And they talk about that with such a passion, right? that they are the guidance right now, particularly in this country, right? They have been guiding us, and not in this country, sorry, globally. Uh, guiding guiding the, the conversations and the transformation, that they are the one fueling that. And I also feel like that's also the backlash, like the historical backlash, right? Like the adults are trying to like, don't talk about that, right? So, you know, that is very similar for me that what happened with a woman, no? Yeah. Because when the women were not accepted in the society should as I, citizens... Should I, should I put this? Should <laughs> I do my thing? <laughs> Purposely stage, like Oprah will do. You know that when the women were uh, not respected by society, the gynecologists don't exist, no? Uh, pregnancy was treated by no, no, not by the medicine. Yep. The medicine was in important things at that yep. moment, no? But the, when the woman began to change, and many times the science is, um, how you call, how we can say it? Science is like an alliance with the beliefs of the society in different moments of the history. Totally, science no? is biased. For yeah. example, 
Will when the woman was without respect, what we saw, what we suppose that was the, the origin of life in a human being, only the semen of the man. And the uterus was only the earth that received the, the, yeah. the, the, that received the, the sin. Yep. No? And, and the that embryo. moment, it was a, a totally potentially the, uh, from the men. And that is, was, because of that was no respect. Totally. No? And, and this is, and the same things happen with adolescents. When the adolescents and the social group don't respect the adolescents, they don't take care of them. Clarify, right? Science is science, and science is super important. It's just where do we put the attention in science? And we talk a lot about with our fellows, we talk a lot about the diversity committee, right? How sometimes power and privilege, like tainted, where do we make the most important thing that we need to investigate, right? And you see that in teenagers, you see that in adolescents, you see that in all kinds of like the different type of community that has been somehow segue, right? Or, or not made center um, of our attention, I'll say. But that's an amazing, yes, amazing. Yes, and, and um, it is an historical uh, uh, writer in Uruguay, Barran, that uh, talk about that very, very, he wrote me very, very well. And Barran said that, for example, what happened with, uh, for example, masturbation, no? And Barran said that uh, the science said that when a man get, is masturbating, he lose strength, he lose power, and all those things. And because that was the condemn of a society, the condemn of the religion, about so things. And even Freud said, shows the things like that. Wilhelm Reich, that was a sexologist of the 1930s, talked about that, and he was a liberal, complete liberal, but not, don't talk about masturbation. That was, and what they found, the scientific, then when they went to jail, to prisons, they found that the oppression or the in jails or in the como es manicomio, to say it in English, uh, health, mental health hospitals, uh, inpatient. mental health. Uh, well, they masturbate, but because poor him, <laughs> they were completely totally uh, impossibility of other thing. Mem uh, François Dolto changed her position at the end of her life. And she was an excellent psychologist, yeah. no? So this is bringing to our times, adolescence is changing. Adolescence is changing. And, and, and hopefully, I think our vision of how we do some, how do we do interpretations of our knowledge at different times and using the context, I think it's changing. So. That's also lucky, right? Not mm -hmm. for everyone, not at the same pace, right? That we would love to, uh, but, it's, but it's something that I feel that we are more aware. And, um, and we teach also about that, right? Like that, not only about to paying attention about what, what we need to see right now, but also like to the context in the past, because That's not right. everything that, that was done in the past has been done right. And you need to be a, a critique. We were just teaching that with our fellows and in Minnesota exactly had the same conversation, right? And, and the obligation for us, right, to use that critical lens to see, was there any bias? Is that true? So exactly, exactly what you're saying. I would love for you to <laughs> share. I, I'm, because I'm really, I'm really curious about how do you survive different governments, right? How, what was your skill? Tell, tell us the story about all the things that you have done uh, at the policy structure for Argentinian adolescents? Policy structure, well, I said I began, uh, we began in 1977, 1978. There were uh, very difficult moments 
from Argentina and for all Latin America. The 70s, the second half of the 20th century, a great group of dictatorships were almost in all countries of the region. And that interrupted at that moment because that, it was so difficult when I initiate this part, I will talk with someone, people that have been 20 years before. Remember to ask me that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and it was, in the, everything that was with youth or adolescence was suspicious of rebellion, of violence, and, and the repression. You know, in Argentina, we have, um, you know, very uh, sad history that we call La Noche de los Lápices. Yep. Noche de los Lápices was a night uh, where lápices is a uh, pencil it's pencils <laughs> in and English. About education. Uh, the night of the pencils because uh, adolescents of less than 18 years were completely kidnapped and then they were uh, killed. killed. No? And uh, so it was not so easy no, to begin with this. But, um, well, in 1980s, began different governments in Latin America and Argentina also. In 1983, we have our first um, president elected in democracy. The repressors were judged at that moment and was uh, an excellent example for all, I think that for men from Latin America and from all totally, the world, no? Totally. And um, at that moment, uh, when we were in, in those uh, exchange, half past 15 years, in 1992, said, well, perhaps we are prepared to have a Congress in Buenos Aires, a National Congress of Adolescent Health. At that moment, I was the secretary of the committee and so president of the Congress that we chair with a gynecologist, told all the group of gynecology. And we have a Congress in Buenos Aires in 1992 with near to more than 900 people. Wow. And when the secretary of uh, the Ministry of Health arrived there and see two rooms like this, complete said, oh, what happened here? What is, and afterwards, then it began the plans. So four years later, we created the National Plan for Adolescents. It lasts for only three years. The government change, the plan goes down. down. We have another government. We made the second, it said, I said, well, this time we'll go. We made a, this, a, the, what's the name? The, the, the second, Intent was the, uh, everything good. You know, when each adolescent uh, meets the other, todo, say, bien. todo bien, all okay, like todo everything bien, okay. Todo okay, yes. okay. Yes. Uh, you just said, okay, okay, no? <laughs> you said, tell me okay or don't tell me nothing. Yeah. No? <laughs> that was, the, but I said, todo bien. Uh, I did last for two years and again interrupted. But at that moment, that second plan, but you I, find have, way. Yeah. I have a support yeah. in the second plan at the Ministry of Public Health. I have support uh, sent by PAHO, the Pan -American, Pan American Health, Health Organization. Organization. And that moment, um, uh, Solum Donas was in charge of PAHO and um, you must continue in the Secretary of Public Health. But what can I do without adolescence? You must enter 
in 2002 began the sexual and reproductive health program in Argentina with a law. It was a change of government and it began that plan. 2002, right? Uh, 2000, 2002. Which is after, just to put a context, right? After the enormous crisis, crisis. Uh, economical crisis and, and change of power so in Argentina. When so when it began that, they said, I arrived there, there was a team not so big, only six persons, and they said, well, you are getting charge of sexual and reproductive health in adolescence. Perfect. Okay, I said. Perfect. <laughs> I said, what we will call this part? I said, call it a unit, <laughs> because I am the only one again. <laughs> in the Secretary of Public Health, I am the only one. So, uh, the unit began to function, and that allowed me to be near the Minister of Public Health and began to say we need a national program of adolescent health, we need a national program of adolescent health, and in 2007, five years later, the national program was created. I was the first secretary, and in that moment, I must said that the, the support of Pan American Health Organization, WHO with Herbert Friedman, it, it was marvelous. Because when each problem we have, you know that we have a great <laughs> endorsement behind us Perfect. that sustain us. But that's an amazing. And the program continues. Yeah. This right program continues, have more than 15, 20 years, and now it has been created a new uh, the program finished, but because it is a direction of adolescents and youth in the Perfect. Secretary of Public Health. Perfect. Eh? And, and to me, it's, it's an amazing story also for reflection for everyone, right? For, for the, oops, the older ones and those like, uh, they are getting into learn how to develop policies. And that, that sometimes you don't get what you want at the beginning, right? And you do like little innovations and you try to maintain that and then you try to adapt and, and looking at the framework, right? So maybe it's not here, maybe it's in public health and trying to navigate that world, right? Till you land where you want it to be mm -hmm. and, and creating the, the policies. But and you know, that you have. Veronica, I want to honor also three persons that when have been working in adolescent health before us. Oh yeah, we'll get there. But before, yes, yes, yes. But before getting there, we're going. To, I want to. I want to ask you about this. Right now that we are here on the program uh, that you have created and that you have funded, I want you to share with the audience, like all the transformation all the things that you can do right now in Argentina and how you care about adolescents from a law perspective, all the advancements mm -hmm. that in Argentina, that it was surprising to me. And I'm saying that because sometimes we have this concept that, that the laws or the provisions that we have here to support our teenagers and our youth are farther away, right? Like for what we have in Latin America. And, when you were sharing with me, and I, and I knew some little, but you, what you shared with me was bigger than that. Can you share all the rights and I privileges, like Latino yes, things? Yes, but I must order that because, we'll go you there. know, there are so many things we'll go, that we'll is go to very the, difficult to go <laughs> further. Back and forth. Um, I have talked about the, committee, the Adolescent Committee of Alape. Yes. But we were all only pediatricians. So 10 years later, that they found the committee of Alape, we will need to found another committee, but a confederation of adolescents, but now working in the centers of interdisciplinary groups. Because if not, psychologists, social workers have no place in that movement. And because of that was created the CODAHIC, 
No, also I was <laughs> the first president of Kodahik. And Kodahik, all around now, they have 24 societies wow. of helping all over uh, Latin share, America. Share with everyone Here, what is the Kodahik. I've been one of the founders of the Peru Association <laughs> of Adolescent Health that work. And that introduced an important change. For example, in the pediatrician area, in our congresses, we have uh, difficulties in introduce adolescents in our congresses. I believe you. But we feel the pain. seeing the experience of Peru, the first one they have, the first congress in Peru, there was a great youth participation. I always take to the Dr. Akaje at that moment because it was excellent. The congress was excellent but so difficult to interact. For example, if you ask for youth participation, it's not easy for the younger said, well, are three minutes limits. In totally. three limits, I must finish. No, <laughs> they last for one hour, two hours. Our sessions, I remember one session that end at 10 o'clock p.m. Oh my Lord. No, <laughs> I, and we have begun and I said, here the home run. You know I'm from a French family yep. of uh, clocks. So <laughs> that was, for me, a challenge. Well, that's a joke only. But um, the youth participation in our Congress is now, and is Something what like is now having EAH because of the presence of the Confederation. Perfect. And all of that, Sokodachi, is the conference, it's like a, com, the Adolescent Confederation from Latin America, Spain, Confeder eh, and Italy. Eh, Confederación. <laughs> it's eh, difficult to say the name. De Adolescencia y Juventud de para Iberoamérica y el Caribe. Perfect. But also they have two exchanges that I don't know how many, but they are Grace Immigration. España and Italia also belong know, to that. I know, I know, no, right? know. The ancestors, was, uh, the ancestors, uh, the Latin American <laughs> ancestors were included people. Uh -huh. So, but, but it's fascinating, right? It's fascinating the, because it's not a mix, right? It's bringing together the ancestors and all the countries that somehow most of our country, right? It's, it's this mix mm -hmm. of Native Americans and, and mm -hmm. immigrants, so. Well, when we reach the, the program, even the, the reproductive and health program, when was the law that created that program, it was very important to have a legal uh, framework, framework to work with. I think that I think that it was in in some places of uh, Amer Latin America that he that having sexual relations before 18 years could be a penalty you know and uh, if we don't have a, we have at that moment the difficult of the the law that we call the patria potestad mm -hmm. patria potestad uh, help me uh, uh, it, it's sort of like the, the power of the parents, the of the, the parents in the laws in owners owners for gate uh, permission to the youngers mm -hmm. and to adolescents to make some other changes. Yep. No? And right. And well, was But the, that have changed. Hmm? That have changed. You that guys have changed. changed in Argentina. The sexual reproductive health law, the uh, law of the rights of children and adolescents, that was a second great law. I have written the, the year, and but the chronological are those. Afterwards, somewhere. you have there <laughs> the, the law that uh, make the possibility of um, intervention of adolescents. No, that was very, very important law. But it's fascinating to me the implications, right? Those laws means, like, I was blown away when you were saying, like, a, a teenager can come to you alone. Yes. Without the parents. Ah, yes. For example, in 2006, we have uh, the leg, lay the law of um, uh, sexual education, yep. and the law of the, of the law of the mills, 
206 <laughs> of sexual education give 10 years for preparing people to give those sex. Because if not, we have the, say, the law, and it's good for nothing. It's so they, only they give like a, like a decade yes. for people to prepare to educate? To prepare. Wow. So the problem was, I think, I have talked with Chandra about it, uh, that, um, that that law um, was very respectful of everyone for their beliefs, for their religion, for their thoughts, for the act. And given time for society to make the changes to, to accept. I also have had experiences of that because in 1984, just at the beginning, I was asked when the pandemic of HIV yep. appears, yep. from many schools asked me how we teach this. And the only one of very few people we were in, in Argentina in adolescence. So I, I went to have gay classes in more than 30 schools in all this period. No? That is my second passion. Yeah. Work with in your free time. In schools. In your free time? No. <laughs> After the unit? After you the were going unit, to the schools teaching the schools. sexual health. Why not? And at the schools, the and first, writing, and writing the the first books. experiences <laughs> were awful, dreadful. If they don't have an approval of their parents to hear this doctor talk about sexuality, they must they remain outside. How I feel when I see that three or four from each course retired because their fathers don't allow them. That was an experience very, very dreadful. And because of that, we need a law. It's no? very divisive everywhere, and, and it still is. And here we, we have a discussion in countries and in different states where that's happening right now, where um, there's like a movement, right, to parents to get into board of schools, just to direct and, and to extract all that kind of education from so schools. Today, so Dr. Chandra Muli explained about the, the laws and the regulatory framework about that, and that is very, very important. The movements that nowadays going on against sexual education. Yep. But, 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 perhaps I said now a thing that is not politically correct. But at my age, I must think what I suppose is need to think. <laughs> the progressive movements advance at such speed that don't let the society be prepared for accept those things. Those changes. And advance and take, and the society react with fear, frightened about that advance of the sexuality, the, the, the parents that don't have, not even the grandparents, you know? So I, I think that we must be very carefully and respect about diversity, because we said we must accept diversity. We accept sexual diversity, gender diversity, we accept all the diversities, but we don't accept the diversity of some Thought. person that is thinking another thing or have another belief than mine. I agree. And, and I feel, and I don't know if you, if you feel that way, right? But I feel like part of that, it's, this is all not the conversation, part of the conversation that we were, like this is truly talking and having a conversation, just so you know, right? Like particularly this piece, so here we go. So I truly feel like even like social media, right? Because social media, in a way, allow people to be so hateful because you don't have your name, you don't have, so you, 
and we, I don't think we were able to see this reaction of humanity when we were writing letters or we were talking to each other because how, how am I going to say something so hideous to someone, right? And now with that, right, like where everyone is saying the most horrific thing, attacking people, right? Or this ability to, to cancel, right? Um, and and I, agree, I agree with you, right? Like where do we navigate this middle term where I say, you, I love you so much and you're my best friend, right? I don't agree with what you're thinking about the government, but I love you. Yeah. And it's a very important piece and, and difficult thing to do. Uh, it happened in Argentina. That we, are, uh, we have agree the same gap, right? With we have the, the same, same. Uh, goals, no? But perhaps we have a different um, uh, movements or strategies, mm -hmm. strategies to arrive to the goals we need. And the strategies must be uh, uh, near the goal we need. The, that is the direction, but it's, it's like the Greek said, the Camino a Ithaca, no? The Camino a Ithaca is full, the road to Ithaca is full of problems with the sea, the, everything, but the importance is not to arrive at Ithaca, the, it's the, the work, the path, the pathway you made, no? Yep. So that is for me very, very important. And because of that, I said, could it be an hypocrisy perhaps? Because the, my classes or my uh, workshops, because they are not classes, are workshops in sexual education, they are near the belief of that school, the particularity of that school. I give enormous classes in, in Catholic uh, schools without any kind of problems. And I have had problems many times at the state schools, <laughs> no? Uh, even in Jewish schools, I have been uh, working with that and no problem at all. But you must respect the, the, the societies and the beliefs. Like that. Both Argentina and the United States, we have the same gaps, right? La Grieta, the, the same, the, the huge cracks on our society where one side doesn't talk to the other and it's exactly the same thing like it's happening right now to the United States, right? And, and so it's very difficult sometimes to have those conversations and to bring people in the middle and at some time if we don't do that, it, it's impossible to, to coexist, right? And, and to move forward as, as a whole community. So, but I love, I love those, those pieces that you brought to our attention, right? And the fact that um, the, all those things that you have been doing as a society or creating these societies and creating this protection and this framework allow teenagers to have far more rights than teenagers here in the United States. When you were telling me like 16, 15 year old, they can make an appointment with you. They don't need parental consent anymore mm -hmm. for anything, right? They can go to see you and make the appointment with you. All my patients have my WhatsApp. There. And they can go alone At 13 without years having anyone. Old, they have my, my WhatsApp. That is fascinating to me. Over the counter medication. Huh? Over the counter medication. Over the counter medication. So yes. it's all this, right? They can change. Um, you were saying that when they're 16, they can change. They can change, for example. They are in the legal interruption of pregnancy. Yep. They can make a connection uh, and make an interruption by the decision of the adolescents, no? At, uh, and, uh, and, uh, at 14 years old. Love it. No? Yep. With, uh, before that, yes, they need a responsible, no? But as we know, because we know perfectly well that some, it's very, most of early pregnancies mm -hmm. are of abuse. Yes. No, and, and, and then we must give adolescents also some path, no? Forward. Share with us, you were 
just saying, right? I want to tell the story about what happened before. I want to tell the story about what happened with Sam um, in like in 1970s with Dr. Gallagher. And I ah. love that story because that, that's truly a piece of some history that you mentioned that I don't think anyone knows about that, right? So share the story and then I'm going to make a comment because I love it. Yes, the beginning of the the history of adolescence here in the United States, you know the father of the adolescent here is Roswell Gallagher, mm -hmm. you know, Dr. Gallagher. But two, Dr. Gallagher had also friends in Latin America, and especially two, two women. <laughs> two women, Paula Peláez in Chile, and Nidia Gomez Ferrarotti in Argentina. I haven't known Roswell Gallagher. Today, Rob Dick McKenzie said, oh, you were of the same, no, no, I'm not so old <laughs> as Dr. <laughs> Gallagher could be today. It's impossible. But uh, I met uh, when I, when after the bathroom, we begin with the, the, unity, uh, yeah. the, the group of adolescents with more than 30 professionals. To the inauguration, I invite Nidia Gomez Ferrarotti. Wow. Because Nidia Ferrarotti, I, in the military government, was ejected from the University of Buenos Aires. Because of what? Because in 1955, she talked about sexual education. And she had all, all also a, a machine of movements for pregnancy, and they said that they, she have the machine of fornication oh machine. Oh my God. <laughs> no, some, some things of the oscurantism, the most dark that you suppose, no? Two things for me were important in the story. One, because it remind me of like hidden figures, like the movie, not the movie, the history, right? Like the, so hidden figures, it's like three African-American women who did all the calculation for the astronaut to get to the moon. Yes. And they were hidden, right? They, they came, they surfaced to, to us not so long ago. And then we have these two amazing yes. thinkers, uh, right? Two women thinking with Dr. Gallagher at the same time and, and, yes, and, and having these philosophical questions like they you. They could exchange uh, experiences and I, I, uh, Nidia told me that she knows Gallagher. She went to Boston uh, and meet him when he had already his clinic. She also have his unit at Hospital Rawson from Buenos Aires, but in 1956 it was shut. Yep. And that's the other and piece. And Nidia right? at that moment have, don't, don't have had the possibility that I have had because the political moment and historical moment have changed. And it was the same for Dr. Paula, right? In Chile. Yes. So, and the reflection there, right? We were talking about like how the context, right? And how um, particularly the military government, right? That shut down like budding, budding system of care for adolescents that were so innovative, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I bring that up because to me, it's sort of like this continuous colonization and use of power in Latin America, right? And, and how all those political influence, right, get kind of head to head to what we need to do, which is science, right? The care of adolescents. And it's so similar to what we're finding today, right? With politics and, and how things get confused and, and yes, put in the middle. The, the, this was the, the, the beginnings in the 50s about Roswell Gallagher and Latin American woman is quite different because of the political media, the political context that was all over there. That was a group because slowly but continuously some have to be growing. Yep. Our societies goes up and down, up and down. Now there is, we are afraid in many countries in America, Latin America also. You're afraid? Yes. Yep. I'm afraid. Yep. 
because? <laughs> I'm afraid because the rights must be respected. The, the, the excessive uh, one use, the, the bad use of rights must be perfectly well changed, but uh, we cannot go backwards. But. Yep. And it feels like that, right, sometimes from now and then, right? Like I'm thinking Brazil in the past years and now, and, and, and it's protecting basic rights all the time, right? And, and so mm -hmm. probably that's how advocacy has been so crucial for all of us doing mm -hmm. adolescent medicine because from now and then we have this historical moment where we need to go to defend what we, what we thought was already established, right? And, and here we go again. So yes. How can some help? How can, we were talking and thinking about that and brainstorming, okay, with the, I'm going to give you my perspective, right, as a Kodak, Kodajik liaison and working uh, with an amazing Dr. Manuel Oscos Sanchez right now, right, and, and doing all this work with and seeing the amazing, the amazing development and, and passion uh, of Kodajik. How can Sam help help to elevate the, to elevate and, and not to elevate, how can I say this, right? It's not to elevate Kodajik because the work is amazing, but how can we make that more visual for everyone, more, more to bring that to the center of the things that, that we do? Well, I think that as the same way that it was that I received from Sam, because I talk about all what happened in Latin America but when I arrived, Sam, because after my self-thought, I said, well, this is, I need more. I need more. And that was the moment that I met in a, in a conference, Dr. Dr. Tom Silver gives yes. in Buenos Aires of eating disorders. And after the conference, I said, well, Dr. Silver, I want to invite you to, to lunch. Yes, you have, oh yes, I have the possibility. Yes, we take a little lunch if you have other things. Yes, I want to go to buy some books. He loves books. Well, we begin lunch and we talk about adolescents, of course, in the first place. Afterwards, we talk of ethics. Oh, both of us we are passionate about ethics. And afterwards we talk about spirituality. Oh, yes. <laughs> he talk about the Jewish spirituality, I talk about the Catholic, the Christian spirituality. And he asked me, perhaps we have had some in common. We don't find it until we think about it or and we were Origins. kindergarten mates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> kindergarten mates. Yes, and why you, but you are the one, you have a great memory. Memory. <laughs> you are the one have disappeared from school. <laughs> yes, because I have had an apex intervention. My father had died when I was only two years and a half. Oh, my sweetie. I'm so sorry. And my mother, uh, three years later, married again with my second father, that is my father of heart. Yep. That, I w that he was a mate of my biological father. Wow. <laughs> At school, primary and secondary school. So he had known me since forever. I was born. Yeah, forever. You know? And uh, that is very emotional for me. Uh, because of that, I don't know if it was a somatization <laughs> when my mother, my mother married again, but I was with an apex, complex apex. apex. <laughs> and they, you know, at that moment, kindergarten was not so blind, so they leave me home to be <laughs> quiet. And uh, well, 
And with that, I immediately Tom said to me, you must come to the States. Come to my service. And this, the next year, in March, we will have our Congress in Washington. Come and belong to Sam. And that was 1987. S-A-M, eh? Sam. Sam, S-A-M, S-A-M, Society of Sam Medicine. Medicine. And that was my beginning. And you guys remember and since then, forever, and you, which number of conference is this 17th. Wow. wow. 17th Congress. You know, at that beginning, it was so, even today, it's very expensive for an Argentinian or Latin America come to Sam. I know that. But um, I remember in the crisis of 2002, that was dreadful for us. I have been in, 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 a, in a presentation with Diana Bird from London and uh, with Tom Silver about the aftermath of adolescent suicide. Yep. That was an article published in the American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, the Amstars. And um, I said, I cannot pay, it's too much. Um, and, um, and, and no, the, the, Tommy said, well, why don't you ask Sam? And I asked at that moment what I call the mother, the father is Gallagher, the mother <laughs> of one was Eddie Moore. Oh my God, don't we love him? Eddie Moore was a marvelous. When Sunshine. we arrived at the Sam meetings, I the reception Eddie of Eddie Moore is like the children that arrived there and she in charge Talking about everything. kindergarten. She was and the kindergarten where are you lodged? <laughs> it's a safe place where you are lodged. <laughs> Gustavo was marvelous. What, a, what an amazing quality, right? To have this welcoming and with everyone. And he said, um, how can I have any um, possibility of uh, paying in, delay and, and let me think I was talking with the board of directors and the president I don't remember who was the president at that moment uh, and afterwards I received a, a mail, a, a mail uh, come Gustavo your registration is already oh my God. safe that is no? so amazing Ray. you know that even now that moment I cried I, I cry because such a, such a, a help, such a, in a moment so difficult. Preaching, for, right? Preach, helping, but also acknowledging the fact like that it's elevating, right? And it's elevating someone who has so much knowledge and have done so much, right? Um, and that willingness to see that, right? And, yes. and to say, I'm going to make it happen, right? And you know that after that, I became self-addicted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because um, I arrived here and when I saw the international regional chapter uh, that I could chair with Diana Birch for near nine years, not because we want to stay, because nobody <laughs> wants to accept it, because the beginning with the AH and all those things. And, uh, it was so, I learned so much from here, no? From this, uh, these different workshops, the special interest groups for me, the special, because I must also talk that because of Sam, I have changed. In which way? Because think in a, in a professional, Buenos Aires, middle class, um, Catholic. I have many things that I have changed. Until now, I am still changing. And because of adolescence. I, I truly think because they keep us young, right, somehow. And I, and I think it's because we are in charge of seeing them grow, like we are in perpetual growth, and, or, or not afraid of growing somehow. I, don't know, but that's my personal. 
for example, uh, I will tell something uh, I expect it could be accepted the way I said. But in that moment, even, thinking I have wrote a, a little paper in a Congress, a poster presentation about uh, homosexuality, no? Because I found uh, things in homosexuality that I didn't understand very well. And um, I read the poster nowadays and it said, well, it was searching something. But below that, I recognize that I have a homophobic beliefs. You share with me that no. and, 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 and the importance way of even like... And you know who changed me? Who? It was Tom, Tom Silver. Silver. We were in a congress in, uh, in Brazil, he invited in that moment and I said, when, when I have been in Washington, I said, oh, but uh, Tom, you have gays in your service? Yes. What's the problem? <laughs> you know, he immediately said, well, I am ashamed, but I think that it would be being ashamed of things that you want to have changed, I think is honest. No? Totally. I said, if is, is, uh, you make, bring a, a diabetic in a fabric of chocolates. <laughs> oh, ah, yes, so you suppose that, yes. And excuse me, Gustavo, and when you exam, made a clinical Wait, examination mm -hmm. to a girl, a teenager, you feel excited. Oh, no, I said. <laughs> well, why don't you think the same? That make a change in my mind, no? I, I think I was prepared for it. Because of that, I said, but, and that was a, a great being here and knowing the normal way, the, the exactly excellent uh, feelings of, of gay and, trans, and afterwards transgenders. That, that was a great, in, that, in, one, in some cases, I think that in America can give some, but in many of these ways, yes, some, some can, can give, give much Latin America. to Latin America. I Latin agree. America, we have excellent laws. We have even, and he, we ha I have um, work in that, also in the gender law and ge law of uh, equal marriage in orientation, sexual yeah. orientations. Yeah. No? I think so, it was before us. Um, that is very, very improvement. But I don't know if I make a plebiscite. Plebiscite? Yep. Like a survey around uh, the community and if we have the I same don't type know of if acceptance. the people agree no. with those. Yep. I agree like this, I, far more that acceptance is, uh, here. And that is thing that, um, um, because it's, um, it's the same as uh, anti-Semitism, no? All, all same, those segregations it's the same with segregation. are very, very deep in the societies of our days. And it transferred from generation to generation to generation. So it has to have like someone like you to be able to have that kind of growth and, and someone probably like an ally, we usually say, right? who will show to you how that is wrong, right? To, to look at that community or, in, or, or, sin, or, cer, or certain communities in that way, right? But it takes a lot of courage, not only to grow, but then to talk about what it meant, right? And, and how, you did, how you did that growth. And I think like that's amazing because that's part of all the things that we all need to do. Because there's bias, we all have biases, right? And those biases are coming because we have been colonized in our minds with those ideas. So they came from other generations, right? And how to break all that lens and, and have a new vision and a new empathy, that's what it's all about, right? Yes. So thank you, thank you for sharing that aloud, how <laughs> that is done, because we all need to do the same work with, there, there's, we all have those blind spots, and that's what we are trying to, to how we're trying to grow 
inner societies, right? And infuse inner mm -hmm. fellows. And then what do you do when you realize that you have a bias? And like, the way that you just explain it on how you interacted with yourself, right? And give your, yes. yourself and the possibility of I think of also in that help um, my search of spirituality, no? Yep. Of the being and, and say, because of that I enjoy, I regret that um, I don't found anymore the special interest group of in spirituality that was multicultural and multi-ethnic and here it was beautiful work that I had received. I don't know if it even exists now, but I, very many programs that um, I'm thinking. I don't I know, like, the multicultural it. and multi-ethnic group it's there, mm -hmm. they see. Yes. Um, but one specific on spirituality, I'm not quite sure if it's... We because have... you know, we need, we need, I think, that spirituality is very linked to health. Yep. And there are many, many researches about it, no? And today we have the integration of mind, body, spirit, no? And, but the problem, and that is a problem of Sam also, they love research and they love quantitative research and they like Basaday database. I respect the database but the pandemia of, HIA, of uh, COVID, COVID. Say, tell to us, it's not always possible that. That has changed. Today we have the medicine of the complexity. I belong to a foundation called Health Foundation, Salud Foundation in Argentina, that work with integration of all those things that are not present in medicine in traditional medicine, no? For example, we have um, the open questions for the open interview and all those things that are technically correct. But the interview with an adolescent is the exchange with two persons. And for adolescents, they know that completely well is not a technical issue, no? And I think that uh, things of a spirituality, things of compassion, things that are more than, not only in the religion belief, but in spiritual belief, I think that is not present nowadays. And I think that in Sam, this is missing. All we had very good conferences, but if we talk about, can, can we talk about sexuality? And not even, not even one time talk about love. What is missing? We talk about pornography, yes. But what is bad of pornography? See them fucking, <laughs> no? What is the problem of pornography? It's not only that. It's that in pornography there's no erotism. There's no exchange. Today one of the speakers talked very well, the exchange when you look to other. When you connect no? as a human The communication being. of eyes is important. But the communication energy of hearts also is important. There's, I'm thinking about Dr. Ken Ginsburg when he talks about how love is healing and the importance of communication and how we, the interaction as human beings. Yep, there you go. Bringing that kind of empathy. empathy. Um, but I think elevating the issue, right? Particularly when we think about how to teach teens, or I don't know if the word is teach, coach teens to, to learn how to have these relationships and to have that kind of, kind of like forming communities and forming, the, forming, forming 
lasting relationship that will contribute to their health. And that now we know, right, that it's one of our main con contributors, thanks to COVID, right? Loneliness yes, but, has become... But we need, if we want to have that communication, we need to change ourselves. The change began. If we want to change society and we not change us, it's no, no good. No good. No good. Not good. I want to ask the audience if some of you have some questions, like uh, to, for Dr. Chirar. I can see one over there. Should it's I? a very difficult question. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say that aloud. Is that uh, okay? So the question is about uh, the new Argentinian president, Javier Milei, and, and sort of like what's, how do we say it, wrong with the, uh, the new president? Javier Milei have a great, uh, have a very direct uh, opinions about abortion and uh, many other things. But not only him, most of the followers, yes. or many of the followers, but since he has been in the government, officially, any kind of those things had been expressed. I think that the movement of the society could have changed or could interrupt some things, but um, the growth that this represents will not uh, be dangerous. I expect that. I don't know what to do in a government that is only two months, no? But um, it was, um, it's a great question. It's a Because scary, it's right? very it's difficult. LGBTQ and, it is, rights. and because of that, because we know that we have in all our governments, here also, <laughs> we have in the, the United same issues. States. We have the same issues and we have the no? same issues in certain they states. Are, here in the United States, many states yep. don't agree with this, no? And yep. even we have in, well, no, I don't, maybe in, 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 <laughs> in the, the American politics, yep. but uh, even governors that uh, don't allow to, the David of Michelangelo, yep. no? Yep. Well, <laughs> so, so uh, in politicians, I think that they, because of that, I be aware when we uh, make the, the explanation that I work because I was afraid, no, because the people, the great mass is homophobic. Is, yeah. and, uh, totally. and, and that, that is the question, how we will work with that. Yeah. Same things that are happening here, right? That you see the, the, this movement that, whomever is different to certain normative, um, it's get ex excluded, right? And there's like this, this difference through policies or through schools or through banning books or through banning treatments. And, and it's something that, that it's scary because it's happening sort of mm. like at the, at the, in, the, in a global fashion, right? And how can we counteract that, right? One of the way for me to, to explain that, like this, that's science, right? Like, we all belong, we all have rights, we know how to treat um, LGBTQ+, scientifically, right? We know what are the things that we, knew we need to do to include teens that are, belong to those communities who have been historically marginalized, and that's science, right? And yet, it got cut on these politics. One mm -hmm. of our main humorists here, Sean Stewart, was talking the other day, uh, first time that he came after like nine years, he was saying like, the globe was, divide, was divided in the past in this like communism, socialism, but now it's identity. Now it's identity. And we thought, right, like with social media, with all this globalism, that we were going to be so much further, right, on this acceptance and, and validation and celebration of everyone, because we're all different, right? And here we are, 
fighting for the most things. And I think Argentina yes. and United States, we are caught in that, right? And we, as a society, we yes, are the one. The, because that, the, 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 the laws of the framework, but we need to change many things and things that we don't have answers. For example, for me, the, the most dangerous thing now that we have is the suicide uh, rates in adolescence. I was looking for the United States rates. I don't found more rule. But you know that um, suicide all over the world, there were 800,000. It was this, uh, under 100,000 less, 700,000. There is a, a, a diminution in, in every, in, in all ages, except in adolescent and youth. Yep. That is growing. And in, I looked the graphic in the States and it's growing since 2017, for the last, uh, say, six, seven years. Yeah. No? Um, and, and, and I think that is uh, the thing is uh, is is in is not enough is um, the purpose of life. We need the philosophy of life change. We need the philosophy of life, and we need somehow like to counteract again my opinion, right? This culture of hate, right? Like people talk about cell phone, and I think like cell phone and media, right? But in maybe in that media was this this movement to have all these hate um, towards the other, right? And, and we need to change that. And I don't know the answer on how, right? But certainly, certainly, like I can see in Argentina, here in the United States, that we're stuck on, on that framework and that we need to counteract and find ways, particularly from us, from, from our society, right? To, to generate a, a new movement and a new framework and a new perspective, right? Yes. So. And we suppose that the adolescents would like that. You know? Let me share with you, let me share with the audience. We have like seven minutes. I was not planning to do this this way, but this is perfection, people. Let me share with you how, how can we do that, right? So we're talking here about the, the, the othering. We're talking here about the, this ep epidemic of hate, right? Um, and, and I wanted to share with all of you one of the reasons why I really, really beg. I wanted to be there to be the one interviewing Dr. Gustavo Girard, and we might cry, but it's okay. And it's just to share with you how I met Dr. Gustavo Girard and why I think it's so important for you to know what happened. So I was in Argentina, and I was in Mar del Plata. I was in my hospital. I was doing my second year of residency in internal medicine, and I was on call. And that day in my hospital, Saturday, there was a forum, an adolescent medicine forum. And, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to miss that. Because I knew that it was going to be adolescent medicine and my subspecialty somehow. And there I am, and there's presentation coming and going. And so Dr. Girard was the president of the Argentinian Association. And so I went to say. What year was that? 1990. I calculated that four, uh -huh. no, before that, 1982, mm -hmm. 1982, around, around, it was, I think, the moment, I don't know if it was, if I went to the, con the Congress that you were talking about when I went to meet Dr. Bloom, but this is what happened. I went to talk to Dr. Girard because I wanted to share, right, that I wanted to do adolescent medicine and I was trying to strategize where do I get the training, right, the same thing that you were doing yes. back in the ages, right? And then I go and I say, Dr. Girard, I wanted to do, I mean, the second year, I want to do adolescent medicine, what should I do? And something on my head kept telling me, Pero, tell Dr. Girard that you're going to United States to do two months rotation of family medicine to learn ambulatory medicine. And, and I remember having this fight inside myself, right? And man, I was persistent. <laughs> and at some moment, because I felt it, right? Like, no. And I said to you, well, actually, I'm going to the United States. And you went like, where? To Chicago. And that's when the match happened. I said, like, if you're going to Chicago, you can't, you need to go 
to Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm coming just from there, and we need to make sure like I get you there. You went and sat down because someone else was presented. I couldn't hear anything else because I was fine. And suddenly the presenter finished. And when you came, you said, Pero, I just realized Dr. Bloom from Minneapolis is coming to Buenos Aires to a conference, and I want you to meet him. Can you come? You're going to be my invitee to the conference. And I went there, and you treated me like if you knew me from ever, and you were my mentor. And I met Dr. Bloom, who told me, like, oh, I will fax you all the information for you to come. And the rest is history. And, and I don't have words to, to thank you for that. And the only way that I, I and the only, no, not the only way, but the real time that I realized about the magnitude of that was when I was on the National Museum of African American History and Culture. And when they were, there's a presentation about activism and the activists, the African American activists have this say that you lift as you climb. And when I saw that, lift as you climb, I felt that was Dr. Girard, who <laughs> passed me the baton and gave me this amazing opportunity to come to the training of my life. The training Thank of my you. life. And I don't have words. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> that we need to dance tango? It sounded like a tango, right? Maybe we should put like the, the song and, and do those lyrics. So part of the solution, I think like just to, to help this world, right? Is to lift up your climb and to see the other as an extension of you and supporting each other uh, for the world, for a better world and a better future. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and now we're crying. <laughs> ah. Thank you, everyone. I didn't see any questions <laughs> online, so did you see it? No, no perfect. Questions, just thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs>